BioNB222 is the second in a two-part introductory course series here in the Department of Neurobiology and Behavior. And the purpose of the course is to introduce students to the entire range of the field of neuroscience. Neuroscience is a profoundly interdisciplinary field. So to understand how the brain works, you have to study it at every level. So in the course, we have a team of faculty from across the department who bring their own research into the classroom to talk about studying individual neurons at the molecular level. Hi, I'm Joe Fecho, and in neurobiology, I teach the portion that deals with how neurons generate electrical activity that's used to communicate among the cells that form the circuits that produce behavior. Okay. Uh, hi students, my name is Nilaya Puja. I will be your professor on uh, Bio 2220, and I'm teaching sensory systems. Uh, we have people talking about how these individual neurons form synapses and small networks, and how ultimately networks are built up into large human behaviors. Jesse, Professor Jesse Goldberg works on vocal learning in songbirds, and he can use research ongoing in his laboratory at the cutting edge of the field. Okay, hi, my name is Jesse Goldberg, and I teach a section on the neural circuits for motor control. So what you don't see on this camera is that behind the camera, my esteemed colleague, Charlie Walcott, is videotaping me. Charlie asked me to move some part of my body. An arm. My arm, okay, okay. So Charlie said to move my arm. He vocalized, sound waves propagated through the air. They vibrated my cochlea. My cochlea transmitted electrical signals up, my auditory, up to my auditory brainstem, up to my cortex. My auditory cortex went sent to signal my motor cortex, specifically the arm part of my motor cortex. The signal then went down my spinal cord to the ventral part of my spinal cord, sent wires down to the muscles of my arm to make my arm, arm move. And that all happened in about, what do you think, Charlie? How long do you think that took for me to do that? Not very long. About 100 milliseconds or less. And it's amazing that we can do that effortlessly. So if you want to learn about how we move, uh, that's what my section of the course is about. Professor Melissa Warden, uh, in her laboratory, works on motivation, how animals make decisions, decide what's important to them, choose when it's time to feed and maybe when it's time to run for a predator. And again, in the classroom, she brings examples from her own work. Hi, I'm Melissa Warden, and I'm a professor in 2220. I teach uh, two units in 2220. One is focused on very basic circuits in the brain that are important for um, uh, motivated behavior oriented towards things like drinking water or eating food. And the other unit is on uh, higher level cognition and the parts of the brain that are important for attention and reasoning and even touching on things like consciousness. The course is offered in two forms, a three credit and a four credit version. For people who are majoring in, or rather doing a concentration in neurobiology, you take a four credit version where in addition to the three lectures per week, you take a once a week 75 minute section where you go into much more detail and enrichment and delve in further into these concepts to better prepare you for a continuing study of neuroscience in the department. But many students who are not concentrators in NBNB take the course as a three credit or four credit version and find it enriches their studies in many other fields because there are topics from um, neuroscience is being carried out at Cornell and departments all across the university. There's neuroscience going on in the Department of Psychology, in engineering, in uh, pharmacology up in the veterinary school. Even departments like economics and philosophy use neuroscience principles in ongoing research.